it's so much of a relief to recognise that everything that you experience, everything that you think, everything you feel, everything you sense in your body, is the shining forth of the dynamic energy of open intelligence. Everything, absolutely everything. There's nothing that's not included within this vast view. And with this simple insight, this simple recognition, you have the context and the understanding for all of your experience. Because without this recognition, without the recognition that everything, all descriptions, have this same fundamental essence, all of them shine forth equally from this openness, from this openness of perception, what's looking through your eyes, what knows you're sitting in that chair, what's hearing these words, this ability to know, this intelligence, this alertness, this cognizance. Without this instinctive recognition that everything is known only in, of, as and through this intelligence, then we're lost. Because we believe that all of these descriptions have an independent nature. And when we believe they have an independent nature, then we really believe that we have to do something about them. We've got to manage them. We've got to control them. We've got to indulge in them and race after them. Or we've got to keep them at bay and avoid them. And it makes life very, very difficult and very complicated. Because we're always evaluating what's going on. You know, what's going on in us? How, how, how am I feeling now? You know, am I happy? Am I sad? Am I feeling relaxed? Am I feeling comfortable? Am I liking what's going on? Um, are they liking me? Am I liking them? You know, what's going on here? You know, okay, well, this is going on. I can feel this in my body now. I think we've got power back. <laughs> it's this continual display. And it's completely unpredictable. And um, while we're focused on this unpredictable display and trying to manage it and control it, life is hard work. It's really hard work because we're trying to work out the whole time, you know, wh what do I want? What do I need? You know, is this desire something I need to act on? Do I need to hold it in? You know, should I keep quiet about this or should I go and tell this person how much I like them? You know, this, this desire I'm having now, you know, I, I, do I want to smoke a cigarette? Oh no, I don't, I do. I really got this desire, but I don't like smoking anymore. I said I'm not going to do it or, you know, I, I, I'm going to eat <coughs> healthily. I said I'm going to eat healthily. Oh, but look at that chocolate cake. It's just <laughs> so delicious and it, oh, and it's got the fresh ch sort of fudge coming down the sides and, <laughs> and the whole, t you know, this this checking in and everything. We're just you know, really tense, looking at everything, trying to work out how do we relate to what's going on? How do we relate to everything we're feeling, everything we're experiencing? And it's so complicated trying to weigh everything up. All of these different ideas we have about everything. All of the ideas we have about ourselves and our own identity. Trying to work out what, what kind of person am I? You know, am I... Um, you know, am, am I a greedy person or am I somebody that's very controlled or, you know, am I a healthy person or, um, you know, I, I'm, I'd like to be a healthy person but then I've got this injury suddenly and I don't feel healthy and oh no, that's, you know, what do I do? I thought, you know, my well-being depended on my, on my health and feeling well and, 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 you know, you can eat something one day and then the next day you're, you're in bed completely incapacitated. So, what we're introduced to here is the, the, the basis and the essence for all of these experiences, all of these descriptions, whether we label them a desire, like something that we feel we have a, a, a need for, or whether it's a physical sensation, like feeling cold, or whether it's something we're very afraid of, like a spider, or whether it's an emotion or a thought, like feeling bored. All of these are data shining forth from open intelligence. All of them. Now, we can have this as an intellectual understanding, and that's fantastic. And I could see that quite quickly. And I could understand that I couldn't experience anything without this openness of perception. That had to be there. 
and every time I checked in with a short moment and I just relaxed the need to focus on all of the descriptions, then I could allow myself to notice this alertness, this intelligence. And it was just a noticing, because it was already there. I didn't have to try and cultivate it or bring it into being. It was already there, just naturally present. And um, so the intellectual understanding was the first thing. I could understand that there had to be something that was knowing, something that was experiencing all of this information, all of this data, all of these ideas and thoughts and experiences. And the thing was, though, that the intellectual understanding didn't actually do me much good when it came to living life. Because I could have the intellectual understanding of everything's interconnected, everything's one, you know, it's all indivisible, yeah, yeah, I've got that, I've got that. And then there's that chocolate cake and, you know, oh my God, no, I've got to look after my figure, and especially if I want to look good on the beach and, you know, fulfil those desires, and it's starting to get complicated again, isn't it, now? And it's just a chuck piece of chocolate cake and all I'm spinning off into all of these stories of descriptions and and, and there's that that instinctive recognition has basically disappeared because we're caught up in all of the descriptions and we've forgotten the context and it happens so quickly we're so used to running after the descriptions that at the beginning it, it, it can very much feel like we're jumping between the two we're jumping between seeing ourselves as open intelligence and recognizing everything as the shining forth of open intelligence and then suddenly we're caught up in the story and really believing the descriptions. And then we relax for a moment or we listen to a talk or we come to an open meeting and there's that recognition again. There's that recognition that everything is already naturally at ease. Everything appearing naturally, spontaneously and then resolving effortlessly. All our experience has exactly the same fundamental nature. And so all we're doing here is, is training up in that, is getting used to that, actually seeing through all of these descriptions we've had about everything. And I know for me that the, the, the descriptions I had the most, the, mo the thing I had the most descriptions about was myself. You know, how I was feeling, what those feelings meant, what I was thinking, what those thoughts meant, where they came from, what I needed to do with them, what I was experiencing and what these experiences meant and how I could manage those, trying to have positive ones and to keep the unpleasant ones at bay, trying to work out how I should be spending my time, who I should be spending my time with, what kind of person was I, what kind of things did I like doing constantly trying to work all of this stuff out and most of the time just being so caught up in all of this stuff that I wasn't actually really enjoying what was going on in that moment that I wasn't able to respond with complete openness and ease to whatever was occurring and so it's such a relief just to allow all of that just to be exactly as it is without trying to change it without needing to do anything with it just relaxing and allowing it all to be however it is appearing. And when that decision is made in each moment, each short moment we're deciding, we're just going to relax the need to describe everything, <coughs> relax the need to try and understand everything, relax the need to try and manage everything. Then what's left is this openness, this open-hearted relating, this open-hearted relationship with ourselves, first of all this gentleness, this compassion, this understanding of, of what we've been putting ourselves through. Now, how much trouble we've put ourselves through by really believing that these descriptions had this power over us. And the description of the, the spider and the reaction to a spider is perfect. This is the same, it's a perfect analogy for how we can relate to all of our data and to all of our experience. You know, there's this tiny, tiny spider crawling along the carpet and it's probably three meters away and we notice this spider and suddenly this tiny spider becomes this huge threat and we can see the hairs on its legs and maybe it's going to jump on us and bite us and this whole story runs off and I hate spiders and one bit me when I was a child and that's why I don't like them and and suddenly this tiny animal that's sort of three meters away becomes this huge problematic thing that we've got to deal with. 
we're focused in on the descriptions about it and it seems really problematic and then we begin to identify ourselves with this I'm somebody that is afraid of spiders I always have this reaction when I see a spider I don't like spiders I can't deal with being around spiders and again so this is the same basic relationship with all of our data so it's the same with, with desire for example when I buy into desire as having this independent nature then it's something that I've got to do something about either I need to act it out so I need to indulge that desire I need to reach for that cigarette, or reach for that joint, reach for that drink run after that person that I'm really attracted to or I need to repress it, I need to hold it in I need to avoid that desire because I can't go there, I can't deal with that you know, so I, I, I avoid the situations where I might feel these things and then life becomes really difficult because trying to avoid people that you feel attracted to is very difficult and you can go and try living up in a mountain and avoiding that and living up in a cave but I can assure you that what you'll be thinking about is not just the cave walls <laughs> so even that doesn't work so really these approaches are just not actually working they're not allowing us to be comfortable with everything that's going on, with who we really are. And so instead the, the approach here is just to relax for a short moment and to allow everything to be as it is, without indulging it, without avoiding it, without replacing it, but facing it in, in this open humility, with this, <coughs> this directness, seeing that there's nothing about us that we have to avoid anymore. There's nothing about life that we have to be afraid of anymore. None of these emotions, sensations, desires. It's just all of it can be recognized as this shining forth. And when we encounter all of it openly, then all of these data streams become the key to beneficial activity. Because we're no longer fooled by them. We're no longer taking them to be something that they're not. Instead, we recognize them to be this dynamic energy. We recognize that we can face everything. We discover this stability within us. We discover this delight at everything exactly as it is. We see that we can be exactly who we are without needing to define that. Without trying to work out, am I my data? Am I open intelligence? Am I this? Am I that? All of these descriptions just settling and softening and losing their grip on, on who we have to be. We can be whoever we like. We have that power. We can contribute and create a world that we can choose how that looks. We're not victims to any of this. We've never been victims. We have this incredible power. To to, to, we can decide what kind of life we want to live. Do we want to live this narrow, frightened life where we're constantly at the, the mercy of all of these descriptions, all of these feelings and thoughts and emotions? Or do we want to empower these same thoughts and emotions with this power of great benefit that we find by relying on open intelligence? Then we find this courage to be exactly as we are. Then we find this ease and this, 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 this openness, just this, just this love. It's amazing to discover that when all of these descriptions are just allowed to be however they are, everything that we've been looking for in the descriptions is found to be already there, naturally present. All of the entertainment that we were ever looking for, all of the, all of the satisfaction that we were ever looking for, everything that we thought we would get from fulfilling a desire, we find to be already naturally present that deep sense of ease and completion, that deep sense of being completely comfortable with who we are. As long as we're chasing after this data, as long as we're avoiding the data, selecting our experiences, trying to only have this kind of experience and avoiding these ones, then we're basically saying that, well, these experiences, these are the shining forth of open intelligence, but these ones aren't. And logically, it just doesn't make any sense. But this is how we go about our lives. So there's this fundamental logic to it. So basically, the key really is the four mainstays, the support network that's offered here. Because there are so many ways that we can misunderstand what's being stated here. That we can take one of the mainstays, we can start to take short moments and we can discover things about ourselves by doing that. But then we can take up 
some extreme position or have some understanding or some insight and really take that insight to have this independent nature to be another framework that we then begin to define ourselves by and so to touch in with a community and a trainer and, and trainings that will only point you back to the very very clear seeing of everything exactly as it is without any hideouts in any of these descriptions is essential because on your own it's almost guaranteed that you'll spin off into some story about what open intelligence is and what relying on open intelligence means and we're all in this together we're all here to support each other in this to build this society from the grassroots each one of us making this valuable contribution and this is incredible, I'd always wanted my life to mean something. I'd always wanted it to, to be worthwhile. And I'd become so disillusioned, so... I'd given up on that. I'd just become, you know, life was just about having fun, isn't it? And, and to discover that there's this deep capacity for each of us to contribute, for each of us to... to take this step to build this society that is based on mutual respect, gratitude and appreciation and solution oriented. Each of us has this same capacity, there's nobody that doesn't have this fundamental ability. And that's what we're tapping into here, short moment by short moment. Keep repeating those short moments and that capacity becomes obvious at all times. And many of you have been around for a while and, and have, have seen that benefit in your life in such a practical way. Relationships just transformed. And when you look back and you see the way that you used to relate and behave, it, 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 it's painful. So just keep showing up, just keep contributing, just keep building this, this incredible life that we're all building together. I'm, I'm so humbled and inspired by all of your, your courage and your dedication. It, it, it just touches me so deeply every day. And so I just, just want to say thank you. And it's really amazing what's going on here, it's incredible.